If you've been keeping up with recent news, you might have heard that a streamer who was gathering donations for cancer treatment got scammed out of $32,000 by playing a malware-infested Steam game that accessed his crypto wallet. And if you've been following my channel, you might think that, hey, that game does look kind of familiar. Because it actually is the Mega Man-like I teach how to create and my make a 2D action platformer in Unreal Engine 5 course. That's why I feel like I gotta address this issue to clear the air and provide some additional information. First of all, the situation was partially resolved by someone stepping in and donating the same amount that was stolen. A group of activists tracking down the scammer and the game being removed from Steam. But there are still other victims out there which also got hit by the malware and Balular News does a great job at summing up that side of the story. But what I want to add to the story is what's going on with the game itself. Because all news outlets covering this seem to be quite confused about that part. Stating that Block Blasters appears like a legitimate game and you wouldn't expect a scammer to put that much work into first making a legit game to then cram malware into it. And that's where my course comes into play. I'm not sure what exact route they took to get their hands on my project files, but there are multiple possibilities. The first option is that they bought the course, actually took the time to go through the lessons and make the game themselves, which I think is highly unlikely. The other option is that they just found the project files somewhere on the internet by somebody else redistributing them. And this is something I generally don't have an issue with if all art assets are CC0, which is true in this case, so this is a possibility. But what is the most likely is that they bought my course on Udemy, grabbed the completed project files I provide in the last lesson, made use of the 30 day money back guarantee, and then somehow crammed malware into the game and uploaded it on Steam. After watching Balular's B-roll footage, my first theory was that they actually did follow along with the course themselves, because you could still see a line trace trying to detect the walls and the layer sorting issue for the ladders. But after checking the files again, it turns out that I actually forgot to turn off the line trace visualization and the ladder issue wasn't present in other video footage I found, so it might be a bug that only happens on certain device configurations and that's something to look into. The reason I provide project files at the end is so that students can compare my blueprints to theirs if they get stuck somewhere and just weren't able to fix the issue otherwise. But I do sometimes have people coming into our Discord specifically asking if the courses come with completed project files. And that always makes me very suspicious because it's very likely they just want to do something sketchy with it. This is the first time I've seen something as sketchy as malware, but I do often see people uploading the project somewhere else and misrepresenting them as something they came up with and created without any guidance. And recently somebody even did that with one of my course projects that contain restricted assets, both violating the license for my assets and the Fab Marketplace license. The whole point of these courses is to teach people different aspects of Unreal, but in a project-based way, so the lessons will have more meaning. And they end up with a cool game at the end, which they can then build upon and expand to turn into something special. And that's actually what many of my other students are doing. Stux, for example, took what they learned from the 2D Action Platformer course, turned it into a mobile game, added many new stages to practice level design, added many new enemy types, and even completely new gameplay mechanics. In their next project, they took things even further using completely different assets, going for a moody and melancholic look, making something closer to a metroidvania, also featuring special abilities and melee combat. But you can still see the DNA of the action platformer course from how the camera volumes, wall jumping and many other things are handled. A very different example is the sick looking project by Selfie, who told me the reason he went old school and recorded the screen with his phone is that his PC can't handle screen capturing with OBS. But the game looks absolutely breathtaking with a lot of attention to detail and combines lessons from the 2D action platformer course with things that I teach in other videos on YouTube. Even though you wouldn't be able to tell that it has any connection to the platformer course on first glance, again the camera volumes are used as a base and expanded upon and the ladder climbing system was also featured at some point. They also used my normal map and edge lighting tutorial to change how sprite edges are affected by lighting to give them more depth. And the dialogue system is based on what I teach in my top down course. And these are just two examples of the kind of students that I love, who don't just follow along blindly with the course, but really play around with these systems to expand upon them and create something completely unique through many loops of iteration. Of course, a big reason why I do YouTube and make these courses is to keep a roof over my head and put food on the table, but I do really love Unreal Engine and I do really love making games and want to share that passion. So it really hurts me every time I see somebody just trying to take advantage of the value that I provide and use it for purely selfish or evil purposes. And this malware situation is the absolute pinnacle of that. And yeah, by the way, sorry, I'm not doing the whole like teacher voice. I'm just kind of tired of all this shit. Um, <laughs> I want to see more people learn new skills and do something awesome with them. So I decided to make the 2D action platform course free for the first 1000 people. And you can get it from the link in the description. So make sure to grab it if you don't already own it. The link is active for the next 5 days because that's the only setting Udemy allows for free coupons like this. And yeah, I originally didn't plan to make a video about this and just made a quick tweet yesterday. 
And you guys quickly pointed out that it's not my fault and I shouldn't feel responsible. And thank you so much for that. But that's not really what I was going for. Uh, first of all, my heart goes out to Rastel and TV for the anguish he felt the moment he realized he got scammed and every other victim affected by the malware. But I also feel bad for Ansimus, who has been providing amazing pixel art assets to the game dev community for longer than I can remember, since not only my course, but also his CC0 assets that I used will now forever be tainted by this incident and people associating them with it. And I guess in a weird way, I even feel sorry for the scammer for whatever happened in <coughs> their life that made them lose all sense of empathy and compassion towards other human beings. Uh, and now, yeah, if the scammer was actually one of my IRL students and I taught them in person, I might feel some responsibility and feel like I failed as a teacher, but I'm pretty sure they just grabbed my completed project files and never listened to any of my lessons in the first place. But yeah, what was important for this scam to work in the first place is that it looks like a legit game somebody might make and just using one of the official Android samples wouldn't have worked. But there's actually many other projects or templates like mine being shared around on GitHub and they could have just grabbed any of those. So something similar can definitely happen again in the future, right? You just see a game that looks legit and somebody puts malware in there. Uh, so yeah, make sure to be cautious with unknown developers and let's hope that Steam takes the necessary steps to prevent things like this from happening again. But also, right, there's pages like itch.io. Um, of course, it, it kind of sucks for indie devs if you always have to be cautious because things like this do happen. But I also don't just play any random games from itch.io. And yeah, we also got to be careful with Steam now. And I just went off script, which I never do. Uh, but yeah, so I guess that's all I have to say and add to the conversation. And yeah, as always, thanks to my awesome patrons and YouTube channel members. I'm tired. I'll go back to working on the JRPG course. And yeah, uh, that's it.